you've got such a unique and singular kind of style of art making. Oh, Was that okay. no, really? It really is. It's your own thing completely. I mean, it reminds me of a lot of other things, but it but it seems to be there seems to be something obsessive about it. Do you, do you find that you're quite obsessive about? It looks like obsessive work. I've been obsessed with geometry for a, a while. Um, Your geometry really comes across in the work. Did yeah. you have an interest in, in mathematics? Were you good at mathematics in school well, or no, anything? I'm really terrible. Right. <laughs> yes. So, okay. It's, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think I, maybe I'm not so terrible at it, like, I like it visually, where I start seeing numbers, I just kind of tune out a little bit. Well, that might um, be the way it's taught too, isn't it? Because yeah. I, think, I think a lot of artists find mathematics very beautiful when, it's, when yeah. it's presented in a visual way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, before I started really getting into or like focusing on geometry, I was kind of always interested in nature-based drawings and illustrations. And yeah, I think... Um, I first became interested in geometry where I started looking at patterns in nature and sort of symmetries that you find in nature. Where did you find these symmetries? I think just, you know, like uh, looking at sort of science books and sort of scientific illustration books. I was always interested in like flowers and snowflakes and things like that. Yeah, anyway, yeah. well that's... Kind of that makes perfect sense. They're kind of abstract art to a start, if you want to start with the first big box that you put your work yeah. in. They're only just abstract. They, they do look like they represent something to me. It's not, it's not the world as it looks like, but it, yeah. might, be, it might be the world as it works. That's, that's the way they look to me. They look like they might be representations or diagrams of, of yeah. relationships in nature or relationships in the cosmos even. That sort yeah, of thing. thank you. Thanks so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's okay. kind of what I am going for. So. so, so in that sense, it kind of reminds me almost of, of, of sort of uh, pictograms you might find on ancient temples or something like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I reference those kinds of things a lot. So, yeah, I, um, I guess I started with patterns in nature, and then I sort of started getting into the world of geometry, and then I was kind of interested in. Um, sort of patterns and symbols, especially in like religious context that I think is trying to like emulate patterns in nature to mm. start with. So I think like, um, you know, sort of um, broadly speaking, a lot of religions sort of like looked at nature and then found magic in nature and their interpretations were like, you know, it's like it's the universe has like this like divine design or like it's God's creation or whatever. So yeah, I think I think that's where I kind of started getting into the whole the world of uh, the whole world of geometry as a way to sort of like imagine different cosmologies and imagine kind of um, you know, metaphysical ideas right. in a specific way. Well it comes so, to, that, that, yeah. those are the sort of things I get from your work without without yeah. knowing anything, without reading anything about it. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. That's great. No, no, this, and it's, and it, you know, I'm in, kind of intrigued to know more, but I also quite like not knowing what they are. I like that sense that they're about something, but it, but maybe it's lost information or it's, it's ancient writing or something like that. Um, with the religious stuff, that's very interesting. Were you looking at any religions in particular? Um, no, I kind of like to sort of cherry pick <laughs> things I like from all different kinds of religions. Um, but just mainly sort of visually, I think like I enter different ways of thinking through the visual means anyway. So, you know, like I look at like patterns in nature and think like, wow, that's beautiful. Like I need to know more. And that's kind of how I feel about sort of religious symbology and religious architecture and things like that as well. Like, um, yeah, I love going into like temples and mosques and all sorts of religious sites yeah. and I think there's something like you feel something okay. without even knowing like what the religion's about. Like I think it's like I kind of think it's just a visual thing. Like you know, visually it's like beautiful and it's um, contemplative. I don't mean feel something as in like I feel the presence of God or anything. <laughs> I just mean like you know, like a, there are visual um, language that sort of like makes you wonder 
I guess, without really knowing the context. And yeah, I think it's I think it's because like uh, the architecture and decorations kind of. I think it's it's designed to make you think about certain I, things. I think that's the key thing. What you just said, then, because yeah. because. Churches and temples, they're built by artists, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And so. I think they're like a sort of, you know, the symbology is sort of embedded in the architectural design itself. So I do often reference like architectural plans and um, bird's eye view and things like that. Oh, of really? sites as well. And like often use that as kind of like an overall composition. But I really like what you said about you like not knowing about what they mean exactly and I'm kind of the same I don't attach specific meanings to any of the shapes or symbols or anything I kind of I think that's the beauty of geometry because it's abstract and it looks symbolic but it doesn't have to mean anything really or, or maybe it does mean something and you you kind of know what it means without knowing mm, you know I think yeah. that I think, I mean, I, I studied a lot. I've done residencies in Rome and, and I've had a lot studied Catholic kind of paintings, particularly images of the Counter-Reformation. And so I can read them fairly well, but when you can read them, you, you convert them into words. And that kind of takes the magic away from them a little bit. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I think the power is actually in the image. And I think maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but I think maybe when we see these shapes, say triangles and circles, whatever they are arranged in a certain way. We yeah. see that harmony. And you're talking, you talk about that in your work, don't you, with your titles, like um, those diagrams for harmonic ideas or something like that. Was that one of your titles? Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, that was a title for my exhibition back in 2016. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I like I the hate, straightforward. I hate titling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't hate it, but it's, um, it's, it's challenging. No, I think you do. Well, I, the the only ones that I could see on your website, I really like the straightforwardness of those. You know, you're not you're not. It's like that's that's exactly what it is. You know, it's not like it's not like when um when you see a, a title for an exhibition and then you look at the work and you think, well, how do, how do those two things match up? You know, yeah. that kind of <laughs> this kind of straightforwardness of geometric findings or um. Yeah. I wrote I wrote a couple down. Hang on, shifting shapes and. Yeah. yeah, it's <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I tried to sort of like make the, the titles like kind of suggestive of my ideas, but I want to be grounded in the visual qualities of my work. So yeah, thanks for that feedback. It's very oh, okay. nice. <laughs> no, let the work speak. I think I think that's yeah. what should, you should always do, or what one should always do. They're kind of cosmic. Actually, I learned recently, cosmic from the Greek word means arrangements. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so perfect. I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah, it is perfect, isn't it? And there is a kind of, there's yeah. a cosmic energy or something, I think, particularly with all the spheres, there's a kind of planet-like feel to your work. Yeah, I, I look at a lot of different cosmologies and, um, yeah, I'm even interested in, like, sort of, like, esoteric or alchemical kind of diagrams as yeah, well. Right. Um, not that I like believe in anything, but I just like I just find them really imaginative. And um, I think one of my favorite artists is Hilma Flint. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I think like she was like interested in theosophy and all the other kind of. Um, occult kind of ideas yeah and yeah I, I think I think um, geometry and diagrams really speak to me I think they I don't know I think they're like tools to sort of like try and make sense of things that don't really make sense I guess geometry kind of speaks to logic but it's all abstract as well so I kind of like the idea of like trying to like visually make sense of things that's not that's different from like rational thinking or reason i guess yeah. i'm never i'm never like looking for an answer i guess okay yeah. well i mean the, the artworks are answers aren't they and the, the other thing that i was thinking um 
in terms of what you were just saying then was there was this message that I think NASA sent out into space in the 60s or the 70s called the, the Arecibo message. Have you heard of that? Uh, that's Carl Sagan talking about yeah, that. Yeah, I think he was he was partly involved in making it. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. And I don't know a, the details, but yeah, I've heard about it. It was a radio frequency, but but it could be constructed into an image, a very simple image. It describes the planets and people and and the telescope itself that's sending the thing. It's not not a million miles away from the sort of imagery that you do. I mean, it's much simpler. But it's a kind of reduction of information. Yeah, it's like, right, yeah, it's yeah. like it takes the Im- information and turns it into something symmetrical and something beautiful. And in yeah. stripping out all of the excess stuff, you're left with this kind of essence of something. Mm. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Well, it, it's kind of what your works kind of look like to me. Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely do that. I kind of, you know, sort of constantly collect and sample different shapes and symbols from different um, sources and then I kind of just build a library I guess in my own head and my sketchbook uh-huh. and just sort of over time um, get reduced or simplified or stylized and sort of become these like just really geometric basic shapes and yeah, so that's kind of exactly right. what I do. <laughs> Interesting. That sounds like a bit of an alchemical process in itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds like you're distilling these images yeah. and symbols. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's, okay. um, yeah it's, it's fun. It's fun, I think, just like cataloging sort of different shapes. And I think often, um, especially like symbols, sort of um, lose its original meaning or something when it's taken out of context and but they still look like symbols so I guess it kind of I mean I hope that it creates space for the viewer to interpret what that might mean. We're talking a lot about the shapes and the symbols but it's also what you do with the pencil and the acrylic is it that you use? Yeah I do use acrylic. Um, I dilute it a lot so I kind of I mean I'm going for the watercolour look but I just find acrylic easier to work with. I like having um, organic look, I guess, um, because my work's very geometric. It could look really rigid, but um, having acrylic stains and things, it kind of gives a bit more of an organic feel to the work, I think. And I mean, also, like, I like having the small element of chance as well. I don't know how the colours are going to stain on the paper. So, right. yeah, for a control freak like me, it's, a bit <laughs> <laughs> it's important to have an element of chance, I think. Okay, with, within defined boundaries, maybe. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, yeah so, I, like, I like referencing nature, I think, through the colours and the softness of diluted acrylic. It kind of it looks watery or kind of airy. I guess, uh-huh. like kind of having that reference to nature. You've done a few residencies, haven't you? Yeah. The place. Yes. How, how no, have you found doing residencies? What, what I have you, love what have you doing done? residencies. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, doing residencies and studying is like a really good way, I think, to just like forget everything else that's happening in your life and just really prioritize your practice. Uh-huh. And just find it really beneficial and I just love traveling as well and like yeah looking at sort of different does it change your work yes it does but I think so far I've chosen where I do my residencies sort of based on how I want my work to develop Uh so um Mm -hmm. I've been I've done a residency in Berlin with Jack that was kind of just random. Um, we just wanted to go to Europe, so we're like, "Oh yeah, Berlin sounds cool." So we did that. Um, and then, and then, like, I guess, like, just seeing all the different architectures in um, Europe influenced my work, sort of afterwards. But maybe not straight away. But the other residencies I've done, I've done like a research trip to Morocco. I specifically wanted to look at Islamic architecture. Yeah, well, I can see a definite connection there. My recent residency was in India, which got, um, which, yeah, um, was cut How short. recent was that? Was that this year? 
Yeah, so I was in India in March. And <laughs> yeah, I had to like scramble to get home because wow. the borders were closing and flights were getting cancelled. And yeah, it was a bit, a bit stressful. But luckily, I had already done like the research component of my residency. So I was able to just come home and keep making. But what you were saying just before, you said about how sometimes it takes a while for what you've seen in the residency to feed into your work. I mean, yeah. that's, that's definitely something I've experienced. I mean, it can, yeah. take, it can take a I'm, year, I think, yeah. for it to it's really a get into pressure it. To, like, go somewhere new for, like, a month and you're expected to, like, produce a work then straight away. Yeah. I don't know. It takes a while for me to process different information. And also, you're there and you think... I don't want to be in a studio making work. I want to go out and look at the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I definitely find that. Yeah, so going to India, I specific, yeah, specifically wanted to look at these um, interior paintings called Shekharati paintings in India. So I'm um, bringing in sort of like more botanical patterns and things in my work now. Um, I guess it's, um, it's a full circle. I'm going back to like patterns in nature kind right. of idea. I want to sort of like push nature forward a little bit more. So I've been wanting to introduce botanical patterns in my work for a while, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. And then I came across this um, Indian painting. So yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Like that's my that's, how, that's how you do it. <laughs> Go and have a look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. So that, that showed you a way of how to how to marry these two ideas of um, of the geometric yeah. and, and the natural. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I was just like a bit scared of painting flowers. I guess huh. for a while, even though I wanted to, I kind of felt like there's like a bit of stigma around like a female artist painting flowers. <laughs> right. And well, yeah, I just. Kind of, yeah, needed to validate that for myself, I guess. And you found a way? I think so, yeah. So um, the sh paintings I was looking at in India, so they kind of like, well, the focus I think is um, narrative paintings, but the paintings, the main paintings are sort of like framed by like really um, beautiful um, botanical patterns and I think I was interested in the way how the paintings were completely unified with architecture. Um, so they use um, architectural elements like arches or doorways as a framing device for the images. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen that in your work a little bit. Some of your work has an architectural quality to it, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. and, and particularly I've seen the way you arrange the uh, the drawings slash paintings around the place. They do yeah. look like an altar or, or around a doorway or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are the things that I'm kind of going for. And yeah, like seeing how it's done in India, I guess I felt like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay to try that, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yes, so I think for Not Fair, I'll probably try and show the new works so that's got botanical patterns in it. Fantastic. Well, when whenever it happens, which... I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's looking it's looking good that it will happen next year so we've got a huge space which hopefully will still be available to us when the time comes yeah but uh yeah it'd be fantastic for you to build a giant whatever installation of your work <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i think um if there's space i i'll probably try and do some wall drawing as well maybe around works on paper fantastic. that's kind of how i often present my work so have you done wall things actually onto walls before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been, yeah. Sometimes I do like just wall drawings and sometimes I combine works on paper with wall drawings. Um, yeah, I've done both. But I kind of really like doing wall drawings as a way of like expanding. Yeah, well, you've got to, you've got to uh, find a different harmonic balance, don't you? Because, you know. Yeah. The piece of paper tells you where to place things and where to weight things and that sort of thing. Yeah. I guess the yeah. architecture of a room changes that completely. Yeah, and I kind of like having that like immersive quality to the work. It's not just like a work that you're like looking at, but you can sort of walk into the work. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Walk into your head, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 